I'm here today to talk a bit about our story. I grew up in a farm as daughter of farmers and uh, was closely to the daily challenges in the fields. The lack of labor force, the need to be there all the time to understand what are the crop needs and decide what to do. I suffered seeing my dad not knowing if what he was doing was right or wrong. Trusting his intuition and the knowledge passed through generations, even in copying our neighbors to decide what to do. If the neighbor seeds, I seed. If the neighbor sprays, I spray. I spray. Or if they harvest, I harvest. And uh, I like, just like my dad, a lot of farmers rely on their intuition, not knowing exactly what to do. We have seen a lot the advances in agriculture in the past years. I know that not everyone here is used to talk about it, because even though it's part of our daily lives, we rarely stop to pay attention and discuss about it. We started with the Green Revolution, where we learned about agriculture techniques such as irrigation and the use of fertilizers. Then we passed to no-till farming, where we learned to protect our soil, leaving the residues from the last har uh, harvest. Then bio uh, biotechnology came, bringing us stronger and more productive seeds. And finally, precision agriculture brought to the mind of farmers how important it was to understand the environment uh, that they were living in to make the better decisions. This helped us to improve uh, our levels of productivity year by year, keeping an average of 2.2% growth. But now we have to do more. It's not enough to keep growing in this space. We need to feed 9 billion people by 2050. That means we need to increase our food production in 70%. And almost all of this increase, most comes from an increase of productivity and using technology to improve efficiency in the fields. And let's say we can do that, that we can grow our production in 70%. Even though we lose and waste our food in one third, most of these losses in developing countries are concentrated in pre-harvesting process. So if we can grow our production, if we don't invest in access and distribution of this food, we still have 5% of developing countries' population suffering with hunger. Irrigation is seen as one of the main tools to boost productivity. Only 20% of the worldwide area cultivated is irrigated, but it produces 40% of our food. Uh, because it allows us to seed out of the season so we can have more harvests in a year, it allows us to seed in desertic areas that were not adequate for agriculture. And when we are able to deliver the crops what they really need of water in the exact moment, we give the plants strength to grow faster. However, we are having water shortage. 72% of our fresh water is directly used in irrigation, and we waste about half of it because farmers don't know when and how much water they should be using to water their plants. And even though this water comes back to the soil, it doesn't rain in the same place, it doesn't go back to the same basin as it was collected. Another scarce resource is land. 33% of our land is already degraded. We expect to increase only 5% of crop lands, mainly in Latin America and Africa. And we plan to have 70% of our population living in the cities because we don't have enough land and new generations of farmers like me don't want to stay in the fields doing things the way they are done today. And to add to all of this, we have climate change. Every 1% in the average temperature of the world, we lose 2% of the productivity. The losses are already occurring everywhere. And they are changing how the geographical distribution of crops happens. Some, some places that were really cold now are becoming uh, agricultural areas. And some other potential super productive areas are not compatible anymore. We are changing the way we are doing things. Today, a farmer that wants to start seeding, he goes to institutions and asks, 
for my region, what do I need to do? What are the cultivars that I need to use? What is the altitude, the temperature, the ideal water quantity that I need to use? But if those things change, it's as if we need to learn everything we have in research in a much faster way and do everything again. So the farmers are being told to produce more with less resources in a more sustainable way. Just like you should be feeling a bit overwhelmed with all of these numbers and all of these scenarios, that's exactly what we see. People discussing about future of agriculture and what should be done and not thinking in the main role that actually executes those plants that are the farmers in the field. But of course, for every challenge, we have different solutions. And new innovations are coming from everywhere, making agriculture a hot industry, demanding for this solution to help solve those challenges. And I'm talking about connected farms, vertical farming, uh, hacking the food to make food more nutritious, or coming with new uh, food that are not from vegetal or animal material, 3D printing, and even seeding in space. Among all of these trends, we have precision agriculture. That is a farming management concept based in observing, measuring, and responding in a more precise way to the crop needs. Precision agriculture was enabled by remote sensing and positioning with satellites like GPS and GLONASS. When a farmer was able to identify a specific location in a field, it was able to create uh, maps of railroad spatial variabilities for anything that he wanted to be measured. With that, now we can apply things like seeds, chemicals, and fertilizer in different quantities. So the machines were developed to operate differently in different parts of the fields. 45% of the farmers use some kind of precision agriculture, mainly fertility maps because it's a low investment and it's easier to use. However, just 15% are actually exploring the potential of what they can do with it. The future of precision agriculture relies on the concept of smart farming and digital agriculture where we start to have data input from everywhere as a way to understand our operations. We are seeing farmers exchange their notebooks to start using softwares like farm logs to register their daily operation and create tasks to their employees. Or using Strider to follow a route in the fields to spot past locations. We are watching an increase of drones and UAVs in the fields, using different sensors to improve mapping solutions, allowing you to analyze planting gaps from crop health, livestock detection, and different things. Gamaya innovated creating an hyperspectral camera that is cheaper and lighter to go under stones. With that, instead of four bands that we had before, we have now 40 bands that allow us to detect specific disease like nematodes in soybeans and specific nutrient deficiencies directly in the fields. But the problem with drones and UAVs are its scalability. We are still having challenging issues with flight operations and batteries. So for many of us, the future of drones will be viable when we have 100% solar powered drones that are autonomous and can stay there mapping the farms every day. And this brings a fight between who is better for the farms, the drones and UAVs or the satellites. For me, they are complementary. With satellites, we are able to have a more systemic view and understand the farm as a whole. When we apply filters in the same way we do with the drones, we are able to see in the farm where was already harvest, where do we have crops, how is the general crop health doing. In, for example, using a thermal sensor, we can help farmers in advance so they can know how the health of the crop is evoluting and act in a preventive way before the problem gets too serious and he can't do anything about it. 
just like Gamaya, we have planetary resources, for example, bringing our hyperspectral technologies to satellites, allowing us to have a more detailed view of our world and understand the relationship between crops in different regions. And last but not least, we have sensors. So the exponential decrease in costs of sensors, electronics, and uh, computing processing allowed us to have a lot of connected devices in the fields every day collecting data that should be used to understand our operations. We still have challenges there, like connectivity that is not available in many countries in Latin America and Africa, and privacy policy issues that the farmer gets constantly worried who has access to this data and what is going to be used this data for. And the scenario we are here is that for we believe that the future of agriculture and the way we are going to feed 9 billion people is with data. But now we have a lot of solutions bring a lot of data. And the farmer is literally lost on what should he do with all of this data that he has, how he actually analyzes it and bring it to his daily decisions. And that's where we saw an opportunity to work and to make an impact in farmer. And to explain a bit of what we do at AgriSmart, I would like to tell you a little story about Mr. Jose Pinheiro. Mr. Jose is a corn farmer in south of Minas Gerais that had an overall lack of control over his farm. He didn't know exactly how much water and energy he was using and wasting which was a problem due to high irrigation costs and government regulations. Besides that, Mr. Jose's employees had to go to the fields every day to try to understand what was going on, how was the crop doing, if there was disease, if there was pests, and if he needed to decide how much he should irrigate, the method used was to kick the ground with the tip of their boots and feel the soil response, totally based in intuition. Now, Mr. Jose is connected to his crops. He has access from wherever he is to alerts that tell him what to do in the fields, how much water he should use, at what time he should turn on his operations to spend less energy, where are the areas that have more deficiencies and that should receive uh, fertilizers, where there are high risk of diseases and pests. He can see how is his farm doing, how is the soil, is it raining, and the most important, he can understand the relationship between the environmental conditions, the decisions he made, and the results he got. Mr. Jose is a real farmer that by using AgroSmart in the last season could increase his productivity in 5%. Save 30% of water that is enough to supply 70,000 people every day. Saved 20% of energy and 128 hours of labor of people going to the fields to collect rain gauges and note down temperature. That represents an economic uh, value of $88,000, which was 3.5 times the amount invested. We do that through Internet of Things. So we have sensors that are spreading the fields, collecting data from the environmental. We combine these sensors with weather forecast, image processing, and an online application to generate information for a precision agriculture. And we don't do that only for extensive agriculture. We have a project with Coca-Cola to take in these technologies to smallholder farmers that actually produce 72% of the food that is consumed. So they have access to this information in an economy sharing model, sharing the sensors at a lower cost. And the goal here is not only to impact their daily operations and bring a financial and environmental return, but also learn. We have a lot of data in the fields, but none before there was an exchange of this knowledge. So it's not only us who are bringing technology and knowledge to the farmers. The farmers themselves have a lot of knowledge from their experience and years that they have been doing that, that is not uh, exchanged and we don't do so much about it. So we are actually comparing our farms and learning from their data to the text standards so they can learn themselves what is next and help other areas like the chemicals, the seeds, to be prepared to adapt to these environmental changes that we are going through. 
And uh, the digital farming has exactly this goal of accelerating the ability to increase the, crop, the crops in a sustainable manner. So we want to maximize the potential of each hectare. It's not only to focus on what is wrong, as we have been doing today. So we have a disease, we have a pest, and we try to solve it. But also looking of what is going well, what is right on the farms, where they're having the best yields, and why, and try to replicate that making uh, the best of their natural resource and at the same time creating a relationship with farmers who are the actual change uh, movements in the fields. And that's it. My mission here was today was to share my passion about agriculture and a bit of my vision of what's the future and hopefully engage you to create with us a more sustainable agriculture. Thank you very much. <laughs>